Uber actually went up on earnings and they lost 1.2 billion in the quarter. That's not good. No. 1.2 billion? You're still losing money? Yeah, and their gross bookings were up. I don't know when investors are going to demand for profitability. I mean, these two companies have no line of sight of profitability. No, they'll give you monkey math that shows. Yeah, adjusted. Adjusted, yeah. Everything's yeah. adjusted. Yeah. When you just take the decimal and you move it whichever way you want, yeah, you can, you adjust, can adjust, it adjust to profitability. Anything to profitability. Yeah. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Group Chat, number one podcast in the world. We have some very exciting content today. One, it, it is election day. So we will be talking a little bit about voting around the country. Uh, two, Crypto is absolutely batshit crazy. There is basically a war that's broken out between CZ and SBF. You got to have cool names like that if you want to be in crypto. This is wild. Mm -hmm. Wild. Billions of dollars at stake. These guys are Tens laughing. Tens of billions. Tens of billions of dollars. The entire ecosystem at stake. And these guys think it's a joke. Just tweeting back and forth. Tweeting back and forth. By the way, we just not talked about, but... Twitter apparently had a record week with users last yeah. week. Um, but we'll get into more into the crypto uh, crisis, Disney earnings, Lyft earnings, and everyone's favorite founder is back. The hot idea. The, I mean, innovation on another level. You know, I just, there's some things I love about venture, technology, Silicon Valley, the innovation that comes out. The Peloton founder is just, he's you back know, at it I'm again. playing checkers, he's playing chess. Yep. You will not believe what he came out with. And we talk about public schools and taxation at the end of this, some staggering numbers coming out of New York City. Let's get into it. Happy election day. Uh, all over the country, people are at the voting boots electing, I don't know who, who the hell is going to win in any of these races, but uh, it's exciting. I'll watch CNN tonight. Yeah. So, I'm expecting complete and utter chaos. Yeah. So, if you've been following kind of the day's events, you have uh, people in Georgia being removed from ballot counting because they had posted that they had attended January 6th riots. Um, if Pennsylvania in complete chaos on what ballots can be counted and what can't be counted. And these are all like neck and neck races. So, I mean- Why didn't they get this fixed a week ago? Well, the mail-in ballot issue in Pennsylvania has gone all the way to the Supreme Court. And now it's basically the Republican state legislator in Pennsylvania gets to accept whatever they want. So, yeah, what do you so think? we know how that's gonna go. <laughs> They're so good at that. They're just- And, they and you know, I-, I don't really watch Meet the Press in those shows anymore, but leading up to the midterms, I caught like 20, 30 minutes here and there and found some clips on the internet. Republicans, they get asked by Chuck Todd, like, will you accept the results? They said, if it's counted in the way we think should be counted. No one will be on the record saying they'll just accept the results. No. Both sides are going to say the election is stolen. But the Democrats aren't unified enough to... To steal, yeah, to steal an election. Yeah, to steal an election. There's unfortunately there there's some Democrats with morals that will just accept results. Yeah. And so I think you're gonna see like a lot of these elections, they could end up like going to the Supreme Court, I feel like, because it's that close. So the House, the Biden team I was watching this morning has basically conceded. Yeah, they the were slaughtered. Yeah. And then the Senate's coming down to Georgia, um, Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. So, Republicans understand marketing better than Democrats. The Republicans put together Dr. Oz, very famous TV show host, and Herschel Walker, mm -hmm. football player, especially famous from Georgia. And black. And black. Why didn't we get a housewife and like a white NFL quarterback on the Democrats? A white quarterback would have been good. White quarterback is winning presidency. Andrew Luck. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Again, Andrew, Andrew looks a great one. That's yeah. actually, I was trying to think of. And he's young. Yeah. And he's, he's articulate, yeah, smart, smart, went to Stanford. Yeah. Throw him in a state. Yeah. Just make him live in like a state you know you're struggling in. Mm -hmm. What do people respect more than anything in this country? Football. Yeah. I mean, if Herschel Walker wins, it's purely because of his football talents. Yeah. 
It's not his speaking ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty insane. So, I mean, obviously that's, those are the national races and the local races caused complete chaos on social media in the last it's insane. 72 hours. Here, I believe in democracy and everyone should vote for whoever they want to vote for. But the claims people are making on both sides for it's Bass and Caruso are just disgusting. They're so bad. It's so annoying. Everyone's just lying. Yes. Straight lying about everything. And, and it's just, it doesn't make people want to engage when it's such blatant lies. Um, it doesn't make anyone excited about like democracy if that's what you're pitching as the and i mean the lying is like it's we're lying about two democrats in the same city yeah well you according to in, in la rick caruso is not a democrat rick caruso snoop dogg gwyneth paltrow and katie perry are now right wing because they're supporting Caruso. Yes, that is what people in Los Angeles think. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. LA is so so blind. They don't even know what right wing is. Let me. I would love to take you to a right wing part go to of this Georgia. country. Let's go to Georgia in the outskirts. Let's go to Alabama. Yeah. Let's go to and, Mississippi. And let me show you what right wing looks like. Because mm -hmm. you have no idea what nonsense you're talking I would, about. Yeah, because it's so stupid. Because in LA, for the large part, at least of working professionals, everyone has the same exact desires yeah solve crime clean up homelessness that's all that matters in yeah. la right now that's yeah. the the two things that have deteriorated the city the most so we're aligned on that why is there so much division it's just who's who's delivering that message determines because it's this isn't like pro-choice pro-life this yeah. isn't guns and anti-guns everyone agrees on the same two things maybe some people don't agree on crime maybe they're okay with it they like it they like batman Gotham City. Well, we don't have Batman. We just have Gotham. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> we don't have a Batman, do we? No. I, I just, I, yeah, I don't know. Look, everyone's going to, we'll know the results. I'm surprised we haven't gotten blowback. No one's, I haven't gotten any crazy DMs. Have you? Uh, other than Ari. I get, I get, <laughs> to be fair, I get a lot of support of mm -hmm. just like, hey, this is how we feel too. We're just not vocal about it. I think that's a lot of people. Um, I think, uh, specifically like people with families and stuff like that, it's just, they have a very different view of the world than someone that does not. And I think, um, we'll see. I mean, look, I think in specifically LA, the mayoral race is pretty close. Karen Bass was up four points going into the election. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll see how today goes. I mean, I, I, I'm, I think it's going to take a few days unless it's just a blowout. Yeah. Um, to know who the winner is. And I think it's going to take a few days, even in Atlanta, I mean, in Georgia and Pennsylvania. Like, I'd be shocked if we actually get yeah, results I, I tonight. Would, I would assume all those races go to court. Yeah. I mean, and, and we know how that's going to end up if they yeah, go they to court. Yeah, they have Georgia police protecting uh, ballot counters yeah. at the polls. This is where we're at in America. Yeah. I've been voting for now 22 years. I've never seen police at polling locations. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Um, if you don't really identify with any party, do I have an NFT for you? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you don't identify the madness of the Republican or Democratic Party, get a group chat NFT. These are like-minded people. So, we, we are racing towards the launch of our NFT. Uh, and, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. We're finally crystallizing it. And I actually think given like the macroeconomic um, kind of headwinds, it's more important that you find your community and you find where the opportunities are. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of doom and gloom, but there's also the most opportunity in times like this. So what we're going to do with the NFT community is really crystallize those opportunities. So whether it's uh, like, you know, I was talking, I was thinking about a job board, but I actually think it's going to be an opportunity board for all NFT holders. And it's like, I'm looking for a co-founder. I'm looking for a lawyer. I'm yep. looking for a job. I'm looking for whatever. Imagine being able to to find those like-minded people. And, you know, there's been so many uh, relationships built through all of the communities we've created over the years. This is just a way to truly signify it, identify it. So if you want to be on the whitelist for it, go to groupchatnft.com and get ready for it. We're going to start rolling out all the details and, you know, hopefully get this launched either end of this month or beginning of uh, December. Um, 
that's assuming you have any uh, money left because mm -hmm. crypto might be uh, going to zero today. <laughs> well, it's not, but this is one of the craziest things. Wildest stories. And there's another layer I'm even reading to this today, but let's kick it off with what we know so far. So FTX and Sam, SBF. FTX, I've, been, I've been calling- Wait, wait, wait. Let's get back okay. on first. FTX is an, a crypto exchange. Yes. Similar to Coinbase, Binance. And the volume's nuts. Yeah. And, and you could buy, sell crypto. Yeah. That's what it is. And Sam Bankman-Fried is the, like, he's a really young guy, right? He's 29. 29? Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe he's 30, but he's not. Okay. So, 29, 30-year-old kid that started the, the, the uh, exchange and was really well known in the last coming months because he was apparently shorting crypto and made a lot of money. In the beginning of the year, he was shorting. Yes. When crypto started falling off a cliff. All of a sudden, yesterday, uh, a tweet thread went out from CZ. What's this guy's name? Cheng Ping Zhao. Okay. CZ Binance is Binance is another exchange and he's the founder of that. And that is birthed in China, but he now lives in... He lives in UAE. UAE. Dubai. And he goes off on a thread basically talking about some funny business is going around. He does not very clear what he says in that first tweet thread. Some funny business is going around. We're going to start liquidating our positions in a safe way. I don't know, obviously not so, on FTT, which is the token that represents FTX. Yeah, FTT is the token issued by FTX. Yep. So I have to take credit for this because I've been calling Sam and FTX a fraud since January, February of this year. Okay. On this podcast. Okay. So we can go back and find You find have this to go clips. find it. I don't recall that. And I have no recollection. When of he started fraud. saying that uh, he was donating a billion dollars to presidential elections in 2024, then we found out kind of background that he's shorting the stock, was shorting crypto yeah. while the exchange was like yeah. seeing order flow. This guy's like, yeah. and then he moved to Bahamas. Yeah. I, I, every signal was there that this yeah. is a joke and this is a house of cards. Yeah. And um, I think what happened and how quickly it happened, because they raised a $32 billion earlier this year. So for context, Coinbase is worth 15. Yeah. I and don't think they were able to get the round done. They did. Oh, they did. Paradigm let it. I have some exposure. <laughs> Aren't you an investor in Paradigm? <laughs> well, you should talk to your boys over there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is, it, it's a complicated story, but I'll try to do my best because details are still coming out. FTT is a token that is issued by FTX. And there's a company called Alameda Research, which is Sam's quant fund that's also owned by FTX. So it's a trading, trading fund where they trade and then FTX is a separately an exchange. So Alameda is where probably all the money was made. Alameda is where they were holding like six, seven billion dollars of FTT. What CZ did and what it appears, so Binance is the biggest exchange in the world by far, yeah. right? And he's effectively like, I know we don't know who Satoshi is, you might as well be him because he okay. controls the whole market yeah. at this point. And so much for decentralization. Yeah, exactly. And what happened was CZ, if I had to speculate, saw vulnerability in FTX. He saw they were holding all this like six billion of FTT that they had used as collateral to get margin and loans. Yeah. And what he did was like, I can fuck this guy. Exactly. And he started dumping. FTT and started talking about it publicly, which caused FTX users to start withdrawing uh, money from FTX. Yeah. So it caused a run on the bank. Yeah. And FTX was effectively insolvent and CZ basically like kind of MBS'd his way <laughs> into like, I'm yeah. going to fuck this guy because yeah. Sam's very cocky yeah. and he goes around talking like, you know, he's going to save the world and all yeah. this stuff. And he's made obviously billions of dollars. And in a matter of Saturday to Tuesday, he made the company insolvent. Yeah. And yet, as of yesterday, Sam went on a Twitter thread saying FTX was fine. This is all like a competitor trying to come at us. But CZ was relentless. Yeah. Kept going kept through going the night. And just basically- Forced his hand. Yes. And now CZ Binance is in a non-binding deal to buy FTX to pick up the pieces. Yeah. So, non-binding means- He could back out and fuck- Sam. Yeah. And it sounds like what's really happening. And then Sam 
SBF came out and said basically, um, uh, I'm so grateful for CZ friendship, whatever. Yeah, it's not bullshit. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like some people speculating that CZ is basically giving him some time to figure it out. So it doesn't completely, because it's also not good for the ecosystem if FTX fully liquidates and bankrupts. Yeah. A lot of people will get fucked. Um, so I wonder if they actually end up going through with the acquisition or if it's just a, a stalling technique. I could tell you, like, there's zero chance it's coming from venture dollars. Yeah. Like, they, they don't have the agency right now with the way the markets have gone, with yeah. the way private investments, like Sequoia did the round before Paradigm. Yeah. So I guarantee you Sequoia doesn't have a mandate to go give... Like, you know, similar how Robin had got saved? That was yeah. in the peak of the boom. Yeah. So, the, every VC was like, yeah, sure, I'll backstop yeah. this on a convertible note. That That's yeah. not the market environment today. Yeah. So, it's going to be tough. He's not going to get the money. His only option is Binance at this point. So, yeah, but Binance has to actually go through with it. Mm -hmm. that, that that's And I think they do because it would just cause too much chaos. It already has. Like, and it, it's, it creates a monopoly on exchange. Yeah. And, well, by the, by the way, they... If they own FTX, I mean, there's nothing else. Yeah, and I think the other interesting thing is there's uh, Crypto.com now, there's Coinbase, and then now there's Binance. And Binance is under investigation from the Department of Justice. Yeah, like I highly doubt CZ could step foot on U.S. soil. No chance. Like I'm, he would be arrested, I would think. He I don't, he can't step on any soil. Besides he can't the, go to China. Yeah, he's staying in the Gulf. I know he's at Davos in the desert in Saudi. Yeah. He's just going to have to live in the Gulf the rest of his Hopefully life. Hopefully he likes the heat because he ain't never going skiing again unless it's in that mall in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, so crypto sold off and I, I think in times like this when it, it really only sold off like 10, 15%, it didn't sell off 70%, 80%, which, yeah. which means like how much confidence there still is in crypto Solana being around. Solana got slaughtered. Because Solana was an FTX like... Well, uh, it said that Binance was selling Solana to buy to Solana was a pump and dump scheme. Yeah. We, we've known that. Yeah. I've been saying that too for for months. Like it was a VC pump and dump scheme. Yeah. You look at the who the early token holders were yeah. and who sold it immediately. Yeah, but I mean, it was still holding up some value, and it just got clobbered more in the last. I guarantee time. you, those early token holders don't hold Solana anymore. Of course, why would anyone? And um, yeah, I think the space more of this needs to get washed out because. That's yeah, the only I mean, way. It, the problem is, is it's, it just proves it's not decentralized. It is literally two guys got into a pissing contest <laughs> and hot, billions of dollars evaporated. Well, the, it's so... I, I don't think there could be a run on the bank on Bitcoin and Ethereum. FTT was all owned by one company. Yeah. So it was as centralized as it gets. Yeah. So but the problem no is one it, owns Bitcoin. Yeah. No meaning like there's no centralized... I thought Putin... Putin is Satoshi, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think you're going to see, obviously, I mean, it seems like Bitcoin's held above 18K. Yeah. Which is not that, considering what just happened. Yeah. It's pretty good that it was only down well, 10 Bitcoin, unless- I mean, Carvana's down like 70% this week. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's just a whole nother- you can't compare Bitcoin. If you're comparing Bitcoin to Carvana, Bitcoin's worthless. I'm not, but I'm just saying like, it's not that big of a correction given what happened in the space. Yeah, in the I guess last there was no one, no one was liquidating Bitcoin to cover their losses. They were liquidating other altcoins. I mean, they might have been forced to, FTX might have had to dump Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie at least. Yeah. There's, could who, who could play SBF? Jonah Hill? Yeah, probably. He has to play him. It's a good one. Who should play CZ? I don't know. I don't know who could play him. I don't know that. I don't know who could play pull that character off, but uh, it should be a movie. Yeah. Uh, it's an insane thing that just happened. Just like $30 billion company just evaporates overnight. Yep. Crypto's crazy. It is crazy. It's just full. And how quickly it happens. Yeah. Having three days. Yeah. It's, it, it's the, the unfortunate part is there was a bunch of schmucks holding FTT. Yeah, they're all going to get wiped. They are wiped. It's down to like four bucks now. It was what, like 22 or something? Yeah. So it's going to go to zero. And that's, that's the end of that. Yeah. It sucks. Um, but yeah, definitely very fascinating to see how it all played out. Um, crypto is scary. Um, but 
the the other the, the other uh piece that I saw to this was that there was a uh there was a hack on Binance exactly one month ago. Five hundred seventy million dollars mm -hmm. was hacked. And uh, it, they went, turned around, and um, so the sequence of events is this. October 6th, hacker drains $580 million of BNB, which is the Binance coin. Yep. November 7th, Binance starts dumping $580 million of FTT. And then November 7th, FTX urges CZ to stop dumping. Uh, November 8th, CZ willing to stop dumping and trade all their... FTT, uh, if FTX gives them 580 million in BNB, like he basically recouped his 580 million was hacked. Who knows if he actually got hacked? Yeah. If he, I mean, this is just obviously speculation from some account, but this whole world is nuts. So much fraud. A lot of fraud. And that's what, you know, despite Coinbase's bad earnings, they're the only ones in the US at scale working with authorities. Yeah. And you have to. Unfortunately, just uh, it, every time this type of shit happens, it it does make it very difficult for bigger players to come into the market. This is think about like from a if you're holding pension money in crypto, this is scary. Yeah, no, I mean it is scary, and I think it's like don't own these fucking shit coins. Well, it's it seems that basically most of the things are shit coins. Yeah, everything but Bitcoin and Ethereum. Is effectively a shit coin. Yeah. You know what's not a shit coin is Disney. Uh really interesting. So Disney earnings just came out and everyone was expecting, you know, that the streaming subscriptions would stay strong. I mean, everyone who goes to Disneyland tells me it's like record yep. traffic. Um stock is down because of uh expectations on profit and uh, but Disney Plus uh, continues to be really strong. They're 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 saying a lot of um, increased cost across the board that affected their profitability. Yeah, they're saying cost directly with the streaming business. Yeah, offsetting the strong performance of the company's theme park. So the theme parks are record numbers. Yeah. The problem is it's very expensive to run a streaming service. Yeah. Their loss widened to one point four billion in the quarter. Yeah. So. No one's figured out how to do streaming profitably, even Disney. And, you know, they claim 2024, they're going to be profitable. Probably not. These yeah. things. This, this is starting to feel very similar to ride sharing, mm -hmm. where it, it's becoming very apparent that ride sharing can never be profitable. Like, I don't think it's a, it can, just given <clears> the <throat> nature of the business, the only way it can be profitable if it goes back to, like, I remember vividly, when Uber X came out and I was like, oh, wow, that's insane. You can actually make car uh, ride sharing pretty affordable. But all those rides were subsidized mm -hmm. by venture dollars. Then eventually, um, you know, as they grew, they still haven't, like Uber and Lyft have not proven to be profitable businesses. Lyft came out with earnings are just absolutely atrocious yeah. of, of what their business looks like today. So. Uh, one billion in revenue, four hundred and twenty-two million in losses. Yeah. Um, gross margin fell. This is insane. Gross margin fell from fifty-four percent to forty-five percent, which is just insane. And so, when you look at this business, how? I mean, how do you? This is impossible. This is never going to become profitable. We're so far from profitability. I don't see how, unless autonomous cars, it has to be autonomous electric cars. Yeah. And, and I mean, Uber actually went up on earnings and they lost um, $1.2 in the quarter. That's, that's not good. No. $1.2 billion? You're still losing money? Yeah. And their gross bookings were up. But yeah, I mean, I don't know when investors are going to demand for profitability. I mean, these two companies have no line of sight of profitability. No, they'll give you monkey math that shows. Yeah, adjusted. Adjusted, yeah. Everything's yeah. adjusted. Yeah. When you just take the decimal and you move it whichever way you want, yeah, you can, you adjust, can adjust it adjust to profitability. Yeah, you can adjust anything to profitability. Yeah. But, I mean, is Lyft down? Let's see. 
Yeah, Lyft got clobbered today. It was down like 25%. Yeah, that's bad. What's, I don't even know what the company's worth now. A few billion dollars. I mean, at the peak, it was probably worth 15 billion. Yeah, it's worth 4 billion. Peak is probably 20. It's still overvalued. Way overvalued. That's $450 million. And a quarter. And a quarter? What do you think you're going to do next quarter? 600. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, recession, this is the gas prices. The only chance, but then you, you read about like autonomous <clears throat> cars for ride sharing don't seem like they're close. No. Think about how much like regulation, regulation po local politics would be involved. To even get Uber and Lyft to where they're at today, it took so many years of negotiating with local politicians. How are they going to allow? I, I've said this before, Uber and Lyft should be a public utility. What do you mean? Like Metro. Metro should run Uber and Lyft. They're, they're, it, 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 it is a service to our citizens to be able to get around and let the taxpayers pay for the fucking, you know, the convenience of it. Come up with like a rate that's affordable to all. They hire drivers like they hire bus drivers and, you know, whatever. But like, these are not businesses. These are non-profits. With no sign of profitability. Zero. So instead, give, let it be a government-run institution. Maybe it's a private-public partnership where the, the, you know, there's obviously a staff that gets paid well, but like there's no actual goal of profitability, but it's just a utility to the public. Like we think it, LA is better with ride sharing. There's no doubt. Yeah, it made the city smaller. Yeah, and I think it gives accessibility for people to work in different parts of town and the con God forbid something happens, you'll be able to g get around. But like Uber Black can continue as its own little business, but like Uber X should just be a public utility and we should stop with this cockamamie dream that this is actually a business. <laughs> it's not a business. 10 years of losing, how much money has Uber lost? $50 billion? Probably easily 30. Yeah, you know whose money that is? Teachers' pension fund, firefighters' pension fund. Yeah. You know, all that is, we just lit a bunch of pension money on fire. So we could... So we could get to a Laker game yeah. and get drunk. Exactly. <laughs> That's basically what we're really solving for, is just we're alcoholics and we need a place to go from one place to another while we're drinking. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean... It can't be profitable because... The price they need to charge will just turn. I don't even use it as much anymore. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they probably have to double pricing. Yeah, yeah, obviously four hundred fifty million dollars you lost. That was always the promise, but it's, it hasn't happened. What to but double? It, ultimately, they'll raise prices. And yeah, but there's what we're learning is the consumer is resistant to price at a certain point. Yep. Yeah, they just have to be smaller businesses. Yeah, which is fine. Like, you don't need to have Uber and Lyft in some of these towns. There's no point. Yeah, I wonder, I mean, they're going to need to raise new capital, both companies. So, yeah, we'll see. Fascinating. Um, well, guess who gets to raise more money? One of the um, legendary founders of the group chat uh, podcast, um, John Foley the the iconic figure around peloton mm -hmm. uh you know stocks down 90 something percent was once a 170 billion dollar company now teetering on insolvency is back yeah big Ra business right raised you know this guy you would think the lessons he's learned from being a founder and all these amazing things he's learned. You know, I'm sure he's learned a ton about financing and manufacturing and marketing. And he's like, I'm going to come with my next act. He goes and raised $25 million. Big for a seed round. Very big. Yeah, implying, so implying a minimum of a $100 million valuation pre-money. At the minimum. Minimum. Okay. What do you think he's doing? I know what he's doing, but what do you think about what he's doing? What he's doing is launching a direct-to-consumer custom rug company. I almost shit my pants. <laughs> I, I literally, I, I was like, what? Custom rugs? Who the fuck? You know who? 
I didn't think anyone wanted to ride a bike with the iPad that goes nowhere. People for do. 2, it's just small, smaller than they. Yes, I think that's a small group of people. Do you know how many people want a custom fucking rug? Not me. Ten percent of that. So why did investors, it's sophisticated investors, give this guy twenty five million dollars? It's the same reason Adam Newman can keep raising. Okay, at least Adam Newman's is like some pipeline commune fucking real estate pipe pipe dream investment. I get it. He at least is throwing some crazy darts. I'd rather I respect that. Custom fucking rugs. And do you know what doesn't work these days? D to C. Yeah. So like it's hitting everything that doesn't work over raising capital in a seed round at a high valuation. So, I mean, and he was led by addition. I know, which is like one of the legendary investors and true ventures. What did they see that I can't see? Am I the dummy here? Maybe they were early in Peloton and got out and made a ton of money. And he's like going back to the well. And he's like, Give Yeah, me, I want rugs. You guys made billions. There are people that made billions. It was yeah. a $175 billion company at one so point. They all dumped it. Yeah. I don't know if they were investors in Peloton. So okay, like, so that's fine. If addition... I think they are actually. I think True and Addition were... Okay, so if they made billions of dollars and they're like, yeah, we'll get this guy's cockamamie rug company, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Because custom rugs... First of all, I mean... We they, know a custom rug guy. I'm... Yeah. He was hand-to-hand combat. Yeah. And it doesn't it's, I think it's infringing on Persians. <laughs> it's true. What do you think about that? It's true. Why aren't Persians... Get, it's what? also like these are probably machine rugs that are pumped out. None of that like not from artisan. Iran. Yeah, yeah. None of that artisan hand woven shit. Nah, yeah. I don't know. I saw um, there was an arb, but you can't do it at scale. Uh, when I was in uh, Morocco, they have these these rugs, rugs that yeah. are a fraction of the price, and it's superior quality. So you could probably do a hustle like a you know you sell a few thousand. <laughs> yeah. How many people want a custom rug? I mean, like, what, 50,000 people? 100,000 people? No, I think it's just really rich people, I guess. I like, don't, I don't know, any mansion, I'm sure it's all custom rugs. They're not going to... I know, but they have Elm. an interior designer that just... Th that process is different. It's a small different. business. Yeah. Or Gen Zs love custom rugs. Yeah, this it's, is it's a head scratcher. The only reason I can think I think they were both investors in Peloton, and he's probably like, "That's fine." If they both made money on Peloton, I can accept it. Otherwise, I cannot. Because it's the same team. Yeah. What did they figure out the first time around? They should put an iPad on the rug, <laughs> so at least when you when you're walking by the rug, you see the news. <laughs> you're on a call, just have news streaming. The, if the whole rug was a screen, I think that's dope. All right. Maybe you should get one. No chance. I'm holding strong on this. Yeah, these types of rounds don't really happen anymore. It's the only explanation. Yeah. They ain't so much. But they're That's, like, fuck it. Yeah. I'm just shocked that this is his idea. He's got to be a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing he's a brilliant guy. Despite me not enjoying the business, I'm uh, the guy raised money and built this massive company powerful brand but right how can you be so passionate about rugs i have to say i've become addicted to saint james iced tea we have some in the office now we have some at home and with the kids we don't really allow any sugar drink but i've let them start drinking the saint james iced tea and it's organic all natural no artificial anything only four grams of sugar, mm -hmm. which I feel very comfortable. It does not taste too sweet. It has a little bit of stevia in it. And it's been great. And I know a lot of group chat listeners bought it because a lot of them shared with me that they really loved it. So keep in mind, our guy, Brad, he came in here very hot with a discount code. And he didn't want to mess around with no 10%, 20%, no free shipping, none of that shit. Straight for the big jugular discount. Group chat, 40 40% off. So you can go to the St. James Ice Tea website or you can go directly to Amazon and you can apply a 40% off discount code. So that's group chat 40 
for St. James Ice Tea. You got to give it a try. It's an incredible product. At those prices, there's, it's free. Yeah. It's basically free. And I could vouch uh, that your house is filled with St. James. I was over at your house last weekend with the kids. Yeah. A lot of St. James. A lot of St. James. It's great. Yeah. It's really, really good. I like all the flavors. All right. Give it a shot. Let us know what you think. Send us a note once you give it a shot. And uh, let's get back into the episode. A D2C acquisition. I actually think this is actually quite big news. Victoria's Secret went out and bought Adorme last week for $400 million. I have no idea what Adorme's numbers are, but $400 million for a D2C brand is, and, and, and it's a cash deal with more incentives uh, uh, as they hit other hurdles. It's real money. Yeah, $400 million is a lot. Um, Victoria's Secret's turned, down their, turned around their business. They've stabilized it got it back to being profitable. It's pretty interesting. Who are Adorme's investors? I don't know. I feel like they were one of those companies that didn't really raise a lot of money. And they're just a lingerie business? Yeah. D to C. I, I think the challenge with, with, this, with this acquisition, I bet you Ador, Adorme is a great business. Um, I think it's hard because how do you integrate Adorme into Victoria's Secret? Do you run it as a separate business? Do you get the learnings from Adorme and see how we can apply it to Victoria's Secret? Like, how do you just like, because I, I, I think the big, the big question mark has always been, how do these like, these emerging DTC brands integrate with these large companies? Like, is Dollar Shave Club working under Unilever? Is you know, probably not movement wor watches working under Movado. Like how do these companies actually work? Because I think it's actually quite hard to integrate, especially if it's not the core competency of the acquirer. So in traditional, like a VF Corp or a Victoria's Secret, if you told Victoria's Secret, um, we're launching a night cream, uh, we're buying a night cream business. It's a billion dollar business. And we're just going to include it in distribution in all of our stores. I'm like, all right, seems like an easy synergistic fix. I don't know how this works out. So they raised 59 million bucks. And to date, most of it was before March. So they did a big round, $43 million in March of this year. Okay. So they haven't raised a ton of money. So Victoria's Secret must have seen good growth and them eating into their business, more yeah. importantly. So there's probably customer overlap. And they were just like, let's buy it before it gets too big or creators are business even more yeah really really interesting um and and good for ddc acquisitions because like we haven't seen a lot recently mm -hmm. it's and good we're for hearing, the space yeah and we're hearing a lot of scary stories about most what, are scary yeah i mean there's going to be liquidations there's going to be bankruptcies i think some will get saved some will just go away i think it's harder to save the businesses right now because there's no access to liquidity you can't get cash for anything right now yeah um all right. Well, good for them and nice to see an exit. Uh, really bizarre story next. The Tyson Food CFO, who's 32 years old, um, Tyson Food is a $25 billion company. CFO is the son of the chairman of the company. He was drunk and he fell asleep in the wrong house. Yeah. So he w went into someone else's house. Yeah. And just went and slept in. Someone I don't understand. Was the door open? Yeah, it has to be. Where does this guy live where the doors are just open? <laughs> Any town in the USA? Like, I was just, I don't understand how he just fell asleep. Fayetteville, in... Arkansas. America. Yeah. The heartland, you just, the doors are open. I mean, he has to be on more than just being blackout drunk, right? I'm sure they're taking care of him. He's probably a very important figure in that city. But the video leaked of him in the holding cell. He was yeah. a mess. Yeah. John Tyson. Um, man. He's the great grandson of Tyson Foods founder. That's crazy. So they have to fire him, right? Tyson family interests maintain an approximate 71% <laughs> voting stake in the company. But they, I mean, he embarrassed the family, so. Let's see what they, I mean, this is like succession shit. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine $24 billion company? It's a huge company. What is going on? What is that movie scene? $24 billion in revenue. 
I mean, what are they doing behind the scenes? Yeah, this is crazy because he's young. 32 for CFO. He's the youngest CFO in S&P 500. Insane. I mean, this doesn't bode well for young CFOs. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Wait, are, they must be publicly traded if they're in the S&P 500. Yeah. I'm sure they are. Tyson Foods. It's 24 billion market cap, sorry. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I, I'm just, um, I think like we're seeing, you know, the Beyond Meat CFO also got arrested for like, like drunken endangerment or something crazy as well. What's with these meat CEOs, CFOs, are they going through so much stress right now? Tyson Foods business must be on fire. You would think. I'm sure they're dealing with inflation costs though. But it's not, he's not like he's running like FTX. No. Like that SBF, I can't even imagine what his, there's no way that guy slept in a week. You know, there's been rumors of how much he's made, like 10 billion in cash. I wonder how much. Um, but he probably had it in like crypto and shit. Probably had it in crypto. How much of it was Accessible. backstopping some of the loans? Like, is how much money does this guy have now? We'll see. Will we? Yeah, you'll know. If he stops back, backstopping elections and shit. Yeah, he, so he donated a ton in the midterms and pledged a billion for the presidential. I don't think that's happening. Billion for presidential is going to be tough given the turn of events. Um, yeah. But, well, I mean, I wonder if there's, like, is a department adjusting? I mean, FTX is massive in the U.S., right? And so he, is Binance. It People is. People are using VPNs and Binance all day. Um, How, that's the only way you can get those hundred X leverage things yeah. there on Binance. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in the U.S. this stuff doesn't fly. Like they're gonna they're gonna investigate him. There's too much money at stake. Too many American consumers would have been screwed by this. Uh, does he ever return to the United States, or does he pull a CZ and just move to the Gulf? Yeah. I mean, he can't come to the United States, can he? We have a close friend that saw him in a building that you were in in New York City. Wow. He's walking in and out? <laughs> this was probably like four months ago. Wow. Or three months ago. That's interesting. So then maybe he can. But that was, I don't know if he can now. Okay. Well, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, look, either way, it's going to be, um, this story is not over. No. This is the beginning. This is the beginning and there's going to be investigations behind it because I don't, I, I don't know how, what's called, what's criminal and what's civil, what, but whatever they did harmed their customers. Yeah. All right. All right, let's move on to some good news. The good news is there is a winner of the $2 billion lottery in the Powerball. And the even better news is that it happened in Altadena, California, which is just north of where we live, in some service station. And it sounds like there's only one winner, one ticket. And what was interesting is last night, I saw a lot of people like um, passing around an article on like six things to do if you win the lottery. And the first thing is like, don't tell anybody. Second is make a copy of the ticket. Third is hire an attorney, create a trust. And like number four, get security. Like how many people do you think read that article because they just assumed they're going to win? 99%. Yeah. Everyone, everyone read the article. They're like, I'm going to win and I'm going to... I don't know anyone who's bought a ticket that doesn't think they're going to win. They've already spent the money in their head. Can you, you know what? So I think, I think I didn't see how many people bought tickets for yesterday's result, which shadily did not come out. It was supposed to come at 8 p.m. There's a Pacific 10 hour Standard delay, right? Time on Monday. It came out Tuesday morning. That's already shady. Second, um, I think the last, the Saturday drawing, there was like 300 million tickets sold, is what they were saying. Um, God knows how many people bought this one. $2 billion is ridiculous. I mean, 
I would love, you know, how many people went to sleep that night being like, I'm going to. Most. Yeah. Most people went yeah. like, okay, I'll spend a billion on this. You know, a hundred yeah. here, 50 <laughs> there. Give the homies two million each. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two billion is staggering amount of they money. They said that in California after taxes and the lump sum payment, you get 468 million. Oh, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> So lump sum, lump then, sum ta cuts then you half. pay taxes yeah. half. It's nothing. That's a joke. <laughs> they so who's getting one point five? Is just all going to taxes? Yeah. Fuck tax on the poor. That's all autos are. Yeah, and and yeah, it's it's fascinating. I think um, the other thing that I noticed was, um, uh, and so my wife went and got two tickets and took our uh, oldest son with him and I, I don't know if i mentioned this on sunday but we were like if you win what are you going to get oh, yeah, a tractor yeah a tractor and so we had told them oh you're not getting a tractor and then our friend mikey said if he wins he'll get get him a tractor because he wants to go to school in a tractor he even at that age he had he probably went to sleep thinking a tractor's coming like i'm gonna get a tractor and i'm gonna go to school in a tractor so did you tell him yeah, we told him it's not. What do you say? He moved on. <laughs> but it's pretty, pretty uh, fascinating. Like, um, just the the that moment of hope every lottery ticket purchaser gets. And I forget if we talked about it on the pod or offline, but this is a function of the Fed raising interest rates. That's why the it balloons. That's so why it big. balloons so quickly. It went from yeah. a billion to two billion. So we're going to get another big jackpot soon. Yes. Um, all right. Last piece of news. I found this article to be extremely, extremely fascinating. New York City public schools are rapidly losing students. <clears throat> and, it's, and they're going all over the place. Obviously, a lot are just going to the suburbs of New York. Some are going to private school. Some are going down to Florida. Some are going, you know, all over, all over the east East Coast. But enrollment in the largest school district in the U.S. is down one point eight percent in twenty twenty two from a year ago. Um, and then in two thousand eighteen to two thousand nineteen school year, there was over a million students enrolled. In the New York City public school system, this school year is only nine hundred thousand. A hundred thousand kids have left the New York City public school system. That's insane. Yeah, I think that's a function of obviously, if you're in a public school, you probably aren't able to afford a private school. Yeah, so you and just leave. If you're in New York City, it's unaffordable unless you probably can afford a private school. Mm -hmm. And Quality of life, I think a lot of people during COVID, especially people, I think even people without means were like, why are we struggling? Because we just landed in New York or we're from here to live a life that isn't that enjoyable. New York City private schools dropped 2.2% in the last school year. That's people going down to Florida. Yeah. So the suburbs? Yeah, probably mostly Florida. I think so. But yeah, I mean- even LAUSD declined. Dude, LAUSD declined by one point nine percent last year. Yeah, I think those. You've Chicago said public schools declined by two point five percent. LAUSD is even more fascinating because it's because like LAUSD is so widespread. To see that kind of drop means. Where are they going? Like I, because like there isn't the mass exodus of New York City happening in specifically LA County. So are they going to private schools? Or are they moving outside of LA County to go to other public schools? Like what is happening there? I think they're moving to places for better quality of life and not struggling. Yeah, in these major cities. And by the way, and we've seen it, all the public schools in these big cities have deteriorated. Yeah, I mean, think about it. if you're at LUSD. Um, like family, unless you already live in a home, you can't buy one. Yeah. It's, I mean, everything's over a million bucks. So you might as well go to a town where yeah. you can buy a home. Your kid probably ends have up- Have a backyard, have a pool. And then you probably end up in a hopefully better school district. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Those are humongous declines. Yeah. I mean, it was from like the private school segment of the population, 
Portnoy, Dave Portnoy posted a funny video of him in Florida saying how much he misses like being in the fall in New York City eating pizza and he goes, I have to do this for goddamn taxes. Yeah. And he's like complaining. He goes, if ta- I'm stuck in my- Miami right now. And obviously his mansion. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, but I want to be eating pizza in New York. Yeah. Because you have to stay a certain number of yeah. days to <laughs> qualify. Yeah. I mean, look, I think here's what I don't understand regarding the tax thing. Like, it is so public now. Like, five years ago, everyone knew about the tax laws in all these states, but I don't think it made them actually move. And we can argue over the the you know are people happy or not or did they make the right decision but they've chosen to leave if i'm california and new york why not figure out like i was when i was voting i could not believe how many things on the ballot were basically taxes on the rich you if you're a rich person in california you're getting taxed the, yeah. the the there's like the the provision to tax anyone over a five million dollar home an additional tax additional tax to do this additional tax to do that like if the results yielded in stellar public school education if 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 yeah, yeah. the results resulted it, to me th- this is the priority taxes are fine if an average family could live in California and get excellent education no matter where they live. That is not the case. Do they feel safe? Homelessness, crime, all of those things. And we can't send our kid because of where we live. We don't feel comfortable sending them to public school because we don't love the public school there. And we can't walk at night with our kids. Right. And so how how does everyone... You can't really walk many places in LA at night. We used to though, in the same fucking neighborhood three years ago. Yeah. We would walk around at night. Yeah. But now, dude, I used to stumble all over Sunset by myself all hours of the night. Yeah. I, I, I Two in the morning, even, three in the morning, four in the morning. Even I would our, never do that now. Where our office is today, if it was nighttime and where I used to live in my apartment, one mile, I would walk, n- never even question it. Yeah. Zero chance if I had that same decision today would I walk. Zero. You're not walking. I I know where you. You know what you have to go through to get. Oh yeah, it's wild. And that's my thing on taxes. If you deliver the results of all this taxation, then fucking no one's gonna complain, because then everyone's like, if if we don't have to send our kids to private schools or we don't have to, you know, worry about safety. What what does taxing mean? It means nothing. It's fine. It's worth it. At the end of the day, what really matters is quality of life. That's why people are leaving because they can't have a good quality of life in these cities anymore. Yeah, no, it's it's certainly true. And I think, I mean, if you're not tied to the city for either family reasons or whatever. But there's specific- so many people who, who are tied that are leaving, which is like, I've like re- met people that like grew up here. This is their home and they fucking left. That's, I, I'm not there yet. Um, and I don't think I'll ever get there, but. It sucks that we can't, like, why not California think about, like, lowering taxes What for one? Is it just, like, you're, you're alt-right if you lower taxes? Can a Democrat lower taxes anymore? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It's allocating of funds. Like, we know it's not being spent properly. Yeah. And I'm totally fine paying taxes. Yeah. I just wish we knew it was yielding results, like you said. Like, I yeah. wish public schools were safe and clean and you could get a good because education. if at least there was no state tax lower sales tax and all these taxes but it was a banana republic at least you have the money yeah we like- just got we got half of it yeah. we got the banana republic yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you saw the video that released on sunset and doheny yeah so if you don't if you live in la this video went extremely viral sunset and doheny this is next to a, it's beverly hills and west hollywood adjacent yeah, it's one of the better areas in the city, period. Yeah, and then Doheny, up north of Doheny, it's called the Bird Street. It is arguably one of the most desired places to live in all of LA because it has these mansions with the crazy views. Broad daylight, 9 a.m. Yeah, so 9 a.m., the video comes out, or the incident happened at 9 a.m. A guy was parking in his 
wherever his office is. Yeah. It's a real estate company. Yeah. Real estate agent. And has a Rolex. And a guy like rams into him, literally runs him over to try to steal his Watch. Rolex. And ironically, the trainer that comes to our house on Friday saw the whole incident. Yeah. Was the only one who stopped. She stopped in the middle of the street and lowered her window and started screaming because she didn't know what else to do. And that's people an interesting were, tactic. People were honking at her to get out of the way because they're like, "We don't give a shit about this guy that's getting that's just got ran over." Yeah, wild. That's nine a.m. Nine a.m. Look at those tax dollars going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Like, she showed up like just like yeah. a ghost yeah because she just saw like yeah, this. that's scary shit that's that's my challenge with when i'm looking through the ballot and they're like for example they want they wanted you know there, there's there's budgets uh um to increase budget for the arts programs in, in california and local government and local institutions obviously i said yes to that there's a ballot initiative to bring online gambling and uh, love it Online gambling and then actual casinos. My guess is both those, the private casinos don't pass. I could be wrong. At least if those pass, we know we can generate revenue to subsidize the uh, funds for the arts programs. Like community college wanted, there was a, a ballot initiative to give community colleges more money. I'm for all of those things. But you got to get the money from somewhere and it can't keep coming from the same well, which is let's just keep increasing state income tax. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the problem is this, the state still offers so much that you, you have people who left, but none of our close friends are seriously thinking about leaving. No. It's just the weather. It's too fucking good. Which is kind of crazy. How much the city has deteriorated, but none of us are seriously thinking about leaving. No. It's, it's, it's just, it's a hot city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the only place you can hike, go to the beach, and go skiing in the same day. Mm -hmm. How many people on, how many places on earth can you do that? Like yeah. Do so, you know the, the, how crazy the, the, the story on Sunset Dahini? So, we found out the details. Um, the man got caught. Oh, he did? Yeah. He dumped the gun at the scene. I don't know if you saw the video. No. He was with his pregnant baby mama. She was in the passenger seat. Wow. So, this wasn't like, you think they're just driving around with guns like, oh shit, we can get a Rolex? They were on their way to the OB. Who knows? And they were like on the way to Cedar Sinai. They're like, hey, what are you doing for lunch? <laughs> we could use some money. So, this wasn't like a crime syndicate. <laughs> yeah. That's what's even scarier. It's just single... Yeah, this guy just had a gun in his car, so I don't know where he staked him from. That's an interesting birth story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's madness. Uh, but let's see, you know, let's see in ballots across this country what actually matters to people. Because that'll tell you what matters to people. Let's see which ballots are counted. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Depends who you talk to. Someone's stealing something. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be absolute chaos. The amount of lawyers that are going to make money this week yeah. on just suing for every every reason possible. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a while. It's chaos. All right. Well, good luck with all that. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully you voted and, you know, I'm sure stay tuned on cable news and see what happens. It'll be interesting. Fireworks. It'll be entertaining. Um, and then... I think this week we'll get a Donnie announcement on the presidency. Yeah, it's almost like for sure he's announcing. Yeah, 14, or next week, I next think. Next week, 14th yeah. or 15th. Yeah. He's already started going after DeSantis. Yeah. He told him he shouldn't run. This was a quote from today. Um, I know a lot of unflattering things about him. I know more about him than anyone, maybe just his wife, knows more. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's not, right. he's not dropped his tactics. Okay. And uh, uh, we're in for another circus okay all right well let's let's see what happens um we'll see you back here on thursday